Want to learn corrective lighting for your beauty portraits? Let's get to it. What's up everyone, my name is Sal Sincata. Today we're gonna to cover corrective posing and lighting and focal length for your beauty portraits. Now this is something, especially if you're a boudoir photographer, clients wanna look their best, they wanna look their thinnest, their skinniest, and this is our job to make sure that we're making the right decisions to make our clients look their best. In fact, this can even be applied to headshots, wedding portraits. So you've gotta learn these tips and tricks. We're gonna do it real quick, but I promise you, if you pay attention, you'll be able to do this as well. Now, something to keep in mind, your eye will always go to the brightest part of an image. So today we're gonna to use light and shadow to control what our eye is seeing, what our camera is seeing, and that's gonna make the biggest difference in the world. And then we're gonna go into some other tips and tricks, but let's just get started with it. So the first thing I wanna do is tell you about the lighting setup that we have. We are using the Westcott L60Bs, and I've got a three light setup here. So I've got one light with a one by three strip box, and for the edge light, and I'm gonna tell you why it's on the same side as the main light in a second here, I'm using another L60B that is gridded. And to light up the background, I'm using a third light. So we've just got three lights set up here. You could do it with one or two, but I think this is most visually pleasing. Now, something to keep in mind before we get going, shadows are our friends, okay? So the more we light something, the more our eye is gonna be drawn to it. So I'm keeping the main light and the edge light on the same side so that the right side of Lauren's body stays in shadow. And that's intentional so that I can hide things the way I pose her, the way I have her hip sitting, it's hiding in the shadows, hiding the shadows. I don't know where that saying came from, but that's what we're doing today. We're hiding shit in the shadows. You got shit to hide? I guess. <laughs> she's, she's got some shit to hide. Okay, it's gonna be in the shadows, so let's get started. So the first thing I wanna do is show you broad light and short light, and that's the first step to corrective lighting, if you will, and corrective posing. So remember, your eyes can always go to the brightest part. So what I like to do is keep the light on the shortest side of the face. So let me show you this. This is what we call broad lighting. This is lighting everything, the broadest side of her face. Her chest is being lit. Everything's being lit with the same light. So it's going to make her look heavier than she is. Everybody is. And so if you've got a size zero model, that's great. If you've got a client who's a little bit heavier or headshots or anything like that, we don't want this broad type of light. There's a time and a place for it, but typically if you wanna make your clients look a little slimmer, you want short light. So short light, we're gonna bring Lauren come back to me, a little bit more, a little bit more. And what we're doing now is we're going to shoot into this side of her face, which has got less light on it. And so we can do things like shape, move this light off to the side. There's a lot of things we can do, right? We can have flat light and that's gonna illuminate everything. And so what I like to do is change the body angles as well. So what I can do is, Lauren, have your chest turn to me this way. Perfect. Get your body set up, legs set up. Now notice what's happening in her body. All of this is going into shadow for her. So we can hide things, hide it in the shadows. And then what we're gonna do is bring her face back to camera, right? Because if Lauren come here, look here, right? Now we're lighting her. Sure, her body's in shadow, but we're lighting up her face. So if somebody's got a heavy chin, neckline, we're gonna accentuate that, nobody wants that. So now I've got her body in shadow, face come on back, eyes at me. Put this le uh, left hand on the hip or something, now you can give me some angles. Yep, now on the hip, I like it better. Good, chin this way just a dinge, right there. Beautiful, eyes at me, here we go, chin down. Gorgeous. Chin down just a little, chin, yeah, right there. Look down your arm. I really like that, gorgeous. A Little bit more of a softer look. So that's, that's the first thing we can do. Second thing is the way we instruct our clients. So I wanna show you guys something. This is really cool to see. So I'm gonna show you this two different ways, from the side and from head on. Go chin down, okay? What's gonna end up happening is, you see how we're creating a double chin? Nobody likes that. So what'll end up happening is when people put their chin down naturally, it's gonna create a double chin. And I teach my clients to do something I call turtling, which is to push from here. And you'll see me from the side, chin down, to push out like that. So let me see. So go normal chin down, yet yeah. quadruple chins, turtle. <laughs> there you go, okay? So that's gonna thin out her neck. Now let's show it from the front, okay? Chin down, no turtle, turtle. And you're gonna see it's very subtle but this is a huge thing to be able to show your clients. 
So I highly recommend that you learn how to do this. It feels stupid. And I tell my clients all the time, it's going to feel stupid, but it's going to look good on camera. So those two tips alone, controlling lighting direction and getting their to them to turtle is going to make a big difference in the way they look. Now, this isn't just for boudoir. Like if you're a boudoir photographer, this is crucial that you understand these two things I just showed you. But I would do the same thing for a bride on a wedding day. So on a wedding day, I would treat this as the window. We all get ready in hotel rooms with our brides. This would be the window light coming in and I would do the same thing. I would turn my bride's body away from the window light and bring her face back to that window light to create these beautiful portraits. And I would do this no matter their size, it wouldn't matter. This is just visually pleasing on your imagery and it makes a huge difference in the end result. All right, so the next tip is wardrobe. Now we can't always control this. Obviously, if it's a bride on a wedding day, she's wearing a white dress, right? So you don't have control of that. But remember, your eye will always go to the brightest part of an image. So if you're a stylist or you have anything to do with your high school seniors or you know maybe it's engagement photos or stuff like that, the brighter the color, the more attention it's going to draw to it again because your eye will always go to the brightest part of an image. So here, she's in very muted tones. Even though this is a brighter color, it's in the brown family. So it's not stark white, it's brown. And then the undergarment is also a darker brown. So darker colors allow you to hide more things in the shadows, which is another good thing. And then the final tip I wanna give you, and I'm gonna shoot this to show you, is your focal length. This makes the biggest difference, and you again have complete control of it as a photographer, your focal length. So the wider I go, 24 millimeter, I know many of you love working with that 2470 or 50 millimeter even, but it starts to accentuate all the wrong features for your clients, right? So it's gonna make their nose look bigger, their face look bigger. Whereas if you start getting into more 100 millimeter, 85 millimeter is a perfect portrait lens, 100 millimeter, even a 200 millimeter lens, obviously you have to go further back, you're going to start compressing features and you're going to, again, control that final look and make them look their best. It's much more visually pleasing. Again, if you're a boudoir photographer, you can't shoot boudoir with a 200 millimeter lens in a hotel room if that's where you're doing it. So you just have to know how to do all these things. And let me show you the difference between shooting this with a 24 millimeter and shooting this with an 85 millimeter or 100 millimeter. I'm sure you'll agree the difference is quite dramatic. So we're gonna switch back to now. I'm gonna to go to a 50 millimeter. I'm gonna try and frame it up the exact same way. There we go, one, two. That's looking a little bit better. Now I'm gonna to go to an 85. Keep composition the same, so I might have to just keep moving a little bit further back. There we go, one, two. Now I'm gonna to go to 100 millimeter. And so these are the choices you have to make when you're working with your clients, but this is what they're paying you for, right? To be experts. And I think I'm just kind of looking at the back of the camera, the 85, the 50, but once we get to the 50 is okay, the 85 looks really good. And then I have a feeling this might be, yeah, this looks incredible. Here we go, one, two. One more smirky. Gorgeous. I do like the 100. I think that ends up photographing really, really well. So you guys will have to let me know in the comments. Uh, hopefully this has uh, helped you, especially if you're a photographer and you wanna help your clients look their best. Again, this applies to headshots, weddings, boudoir, any kind of corrective posing you wanna do. It's super easy with this setup. Uh, it doesn't have to be just studio lights. You can do it with strobes. Obviously indoor, outdoor, you can do it with natural light. You control this with the way you are posing and shaping your body and remember, your client's body, I should say. And remember, shadows, that's where you hide the shit. Hide it in the shadows. We'll see you in the next video.